Hey everyone, I'm Rod and Todd, a professional YouTuber who makes professional videos. And it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another Transformers review. So, here we go. This is WFC S23 Prowl. He was released in the Deluxe Size class as part of Wave 2 of the War for Cybertron Siege toy line. This is the last Wave 2 figure that we'll be reviewing as a part of Siege. After this, we move on to Wave 3. Yeah, I don't have very many Wave 2 guys. So, yeah. So, Prowl's alternate mode, as of a lot of other Siege figures, are... It's a Cybertronian or alien version of the classic Generation 1 alternate mode. Prowl turned into a Datsun or Nissan Fairlady Z with a police car light bar in G1, so this is in a uh, very stylized version of that. As you can see, it's very, very bright white. And it's kind of hard to see against this background. And what I like about this is that it's very sleek. That's what made me want this figure so badly. Is that when pictures of it first came out, it just looked very, very sleek, and that's what I like the most about it. It's really aerodynamic and just looks good. So, wow, well, Siege threw two alternate modes at me in a row that I really like. There was Ironhide last week, and now there's Prowl. So, on the side door here, is it has some Cybertronian text. I haven't gone through the effort of translating it. But I think it's supposed to say, like, police or something along those lines. And this is related to the transformation, that you can actually open the doors. There's no full interior or anything, but you can do that. His wheels are completely transparent, and they do roll free, uh, freely. So we can roll out to fight the Decepticons. Got the light bar on the roof, which is removable. This is probably just to save money on tooling funds, because Prowl normally gets two redecos. There is Blue Streak and there's Smokescreen. The uh, Prowl and the other two, they always share the exact same mold, so odds are if there's a Prowl mold, the other two are probably going to get figures. However, Blue Streak and Smokescreen don't turn into police cars. They turn into race cars. And so, they have to find some way to get rid of the light bar. Normally what Hasbro does is they give the car mode a completely different roof, where the only difference is they remove the police light bar. However, they finally realized, wait, we can just make this a separate piece so we don't have to spend the money to make a new mold for the roof. Which I think is actually pretty smart, if you ask me. The uh, light bar is completely transparent, it is just painted, there's some black here, and there's a nice red on the actual lights. And, uh, I haven't had any breakage issues, however, they did make a different light bar for red alerts, who we'll cover in a couple weeks, and I have a ton of breakage problems with that one, so I'm personally glad this one at least is... Uh, holding together pretty well. Um, with the light bar in, it covers up the only 5mm port on the car mode. So you may be wondering, how would you be able to store his gun in car mode if there's no hole? Well, this is where we get to some pretty smart sculpting on the uh, light bar. There's a square hole on the top there, which corresponds to this square peg on the bottom of Prowl's gun, which is directly in front of the normal handle, so you just put the square peg in the square hole, and you can mount his gun on the roof, which is pretty smart, actually. Autobot symbol on the front, which you can see pretty well, thanks to him being completely white and the symbol being red. That's a nice black paint on the front bumper here and all along the bottom of the car. 
And he has these two square holes in the hood of the car there, which is supposed to be for the shoulder-mounted guns, which come with the barricade figure, which uses the same mold as this. I don't have barricade, so I can't show them to you, but that's what these are for. These are just uh, put in there for future use. Of note is that there is actually a bit of yellow paint. You can't see it very well, but it's there on his front headlights. As I think there is. Yeah, there's just a, a slight amount of yellow paint on his vehicle load headlights. There's no yellow anywhere else in the figure. So that meant that Hasbro had the splurge on that tiny little paint, which they didn't have to, but they did. There's a lot of nice sculpting on the uh, windshield. That looks pretty good. And overall, that's really all I have to say about his car mode. It's nice and sleek. It's got some cool little uh, bonus features, the light bars on the top. It's pretty cool. So, that's all I have to say about his vehicle mode. So, now let's move on to the box. So, here is the box. As you can see, there's the Siege logo on the front there, the Transformers logo on the side, standard stuff says WFC S23 Prowl right there, the Autobot symbol. And on the back of the inside of the box, there is this little rank insignia, which every Warper Cybertron trilogy figure except the Beast Wars guys have, which is, uh, it's unneeded, but it's a cool little bit of world building, and each one of these symbols does actually have its own meaning, for which communicates like rank and unit and all that. It's pretty in-depth, so that's pretty cool. And the, uh, the uh, little symbol on the inside here is also mirrored right there. And this is one of the boxes where I threw out the clear plastic tray, but behind this window there would have been a clear plastic tray where the figure would be. And then on the side here it's the standard siege mural. It's uh, the exact same as on every Siege box, so I won't be going over it very well. Uh, you can pause the video if you want and just take a look at it. On the back here, we have 3D renders of the figure. There he is in robot mode and in vehicle mode. And as you can see, it transforms in 14 steps. As a cross sell for the Battle Master figures, you can see there's Taraxodon, who I've already reviewed, and Aimless, who I don't have, so he won't be getting a review. And then right here, you can see Prowl in his robot mode with Taraxodon. I will be pairing those up later. And then we get to my favorite part the packaging, or the, the package art, I should say. As you can see, there's Prowl, he's got his gun. It kind of looks like he's prowling the battlefield, no pun intended. Okay, kind of, yeah, it was intended. And he's, like, looking for someone. That's kind of what it looks like to me. You can see there's some other Transformers kind of in the background fighting. I don't really know who those are. That kind of looks like Prime Optimus Prime for some reason. And this one here kind of looks like Hoist. But uh, there was no Hoist figure in Siege. There was one in Earthrise, but I have a feeling this wasn't being planned by the time this figure was released. And then the Optim the uh, guy back here, I said he looks like the Optimus Prime from Prime, and given us a G1 toy line, it obviously didn't get a figure. And there's an arm right there. Can't really see who that is, but whatever. Of note is that Prowl has his, like, the whole back of his vehicle mode windshield on his legs. And as you can see, there's no clear windshield there. He also has the Autobot symbol on his knee, which the figure doesn't have. On the top, you can see there's the Autobot symbol with the War for Cybertron Trilogy logo. And some legal stuff there, if you care about that. So, that's the packaging. So now let's move on to the robot mode. So, here's Prowl in his robot mode. We'll start with the uh, articulation. He has a ball jointed head, so he can move his head side to side. Also, up and down. 
universal joint at the shoulder, so you can move his arm out and forward, and he would be able to move it back. You can move it all the way around because the doors are on hinges, but they're supposed to be kind of like this. Bend at the elbow, swivel at the elbow, wrist swivel, waist swivel, universal joint at the hip, so we can move his leg out, and forward and back, swivel at the thigh, bend at the knee, and the signature siege sideways foot articulation, which allows you to do this, still have them sitting flat. Let's see, as we get, as we, uh, cover this, I should start out by pointing out the, uh, fatal flaw for this guy. He don't stand too good. You see, because of the transformation, his feet fold out like this. However, there are extremely loose hinges, so if you do anything, they'll start to fold back. So you have to do this to get him to stand, and even then, that barely works, because... Yeah, but it's really hard to get this figure standing. That's my main problem. He just has really tiny feet, and just, ugh, not good. For all I know, that could be just mine with the super loose hinges on his feet. If you don't have that problem, you can let me know, but that's the fatal flaw. That kills the figure for me. He's got a really cool vehicle mode, and the robot mode looks like it should, but this just, no. I lied earlier when I said there was no yellow anywhere else on the figure when I pointed out the headlights. I forgot there was yellow here. Whoops. He's got the signature red head crest that Prowl always has. As you can see, he's got the door wings. That's an iconic part of the character. In terms of his accessories, he comes with two. The aforementioned light, the, uh, aforementioned light bar which normally I like to keep pegged on his back because you don't have to remove it and you can just keep it there for the transformation and it's just simpler it's just simpler that way so I normally keep it mounted on his back however it's removable and you can really do whatever with it and his gun the instructions call this the W45 acid pellet strike blaster so I guess it's some sort of like acid gun and you can just fit it in his hand. It is compatible with the effect pieces that come with Battle Masters. I got blow pipes here. I think it's good to stay on. And there you go. Looks like he's shooting his gun. There's a 5mm hole on the top, which if you remove the light bar, you are intended to put the light bar on his gun. I don't do this very often. This isn't how I display the figure, just because as I said earlier, I just kind of like to display the light bar on his back, just leave it there so I don't have to move it later if I transform it. So I don't display it like this, but you can do that if you want. And something I find hilarious is that, see, uh, the Siege Red Alert figure, which we'll get to here in a couple weeks, uh, he has this feature to where you can remove the light bar and put it on the side of his gun, and the gun barrel is the same size as the handle for the gun, so you can fit it in his hand like it's an axe. I'm pretty sure the guys who made Siege Prowl saw that and were like, hey, that's what this is too, because the instructions say that when you put the light bar on his gun, it's in axe mode. However, you can't fit the handle in his hand, so this ain't an axe. I mean, you could probably do that with a bit of force, but it's too big. It won't fit in his hand. So that's false advertising in the instructions, I guess. Of course, his hands can't just hold his gun. They can also hold Battle Masters, like directs it on here. And he also has, as with every Siege figure, a ton of holes all over his body, which you can use to attach his gun and in weird and wacky ways. He has one on his forearm, one on either forearm, 
one here on either shoulder, which you can use to give them a shoulder mounted weapon, which eh, it doesn't look the best because it's pretty big. Of note is that this piece with the hole on it can also rotate down for some reason, so you can have it either on the top of the shoulder or the side of the shoulder. One on the outside of either leg. As you can see there's that problem with his leg, you know, his feet constantly folding down. You can use that. One on his back, which I just used to put the light bar, and then one on the bottom of either foot, which if you attach Cog's platform shoes would probably make this figure stand up better. He also has the uh, tiny little pegs used to attach the effect pieces that come with Battle Masters. He didn't have any in his vehicle mode, so it makes up for it with uh, two on either shoulder. Or one on either shoulder, I should say. So you can attach it there or there. However, this one's pretty close to his torso, so it's kind of harder to attach this one. Or attach the big effect piece to that one than it is to this one. So you can make it look like he just got hit in the shoulder with a laser or something. So, that's really all I have to say about Prowl. He has an amazing vehicle mode, but the robot mode... If he had better feet, this figure would be perfect. If they didn't make it to where the feet do this, every time you touch it, it would just be a much better figure. Also, I lied earlier again, just noticing this now, when I said that in the package art, Pro doesn't have the Autobot symbol on his knee on the toy, I guess he does, and I just didn't notice it. It's right there. Huh, weird. I lied twice about this figure. My bad. So, yeah, Prowl is a great vehicle mode and a pretty good robot mode from the waist up. So, I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. Now, if you do, or if you did, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications, all blah, 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 blah. You know the drill by now. So, thanks, thank you for watching, and this has been Rod and Todd signing off.